good. You know, the summer has been good. It's been a really, really hot summer, as as we all know. Um, so that's always good to you know get people out of. Um, out, they want to go out and they want to spend time with their family and uh, and have a good time. So we have a nice, cool building. They go in there and uh, you know have some refreshments, eat some pizza, and uh, have some spend some quality time with their family. So business at Jet's been good. Play more. Um, you know that's been one of the two questions that I've been getting pretty much everywhere I go. And you know we're behind schedule. Unfortunately, uh, we should have been open. You know at least a month ago, if not two months ago, we're in the on the cusp of being open. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, three weeks, four weeks, a month. Okay. Um, it's really just the details of running some Cat5 cable, tile, carpet, uh, things of that nature. But all the bowling is, is in. All the furniture uh, was installed last week. A laser tag is done. Arcade is done. Rock climbing ropes course. Uh, golf simulators. Kitchen. So it's really just, um, you know, we're right at the tail end. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, it's been a crazy couple of weeks with, with that. And then, of course, with uh, me... Uh, um, making an, an abrupt announcement for yeah. uh, my candidacy for, for mayor of the city of Laredo. Um, so, you know, my phone's going off again. Every day it's, it goes off in the morning and, you know, people are excited about it. You see Facebook and that's one of the many reasons why I decided to uh, to throw my name in the hat. You could just, you could just see this, this excitement, this momentum, this groundswell that was building and people just wanting me to run. And, and you know, like I've said, it's the timing could not be any worse for me personally. Um, to run to run for uh, for this type of office uh, with with my business going on and and uh, trying to get that uh, up off the ground at the same time running a campaign for mayor but you know you just see everything that's going on uh, in in city hall and and the lack of fiscal responsibility the lack of leadership the lack of them listening to the people what they want um, and you know it, it, the, the time is right people wanted me to do it and and uh, you know uh, um, I'm gonna take a much different approach this time to uh, running this campaign. So uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about taking taking my message to the entire city as opposed to just, you know, one section of the city like we did two years ago. Right. The last time you were here, you mentioned one thing that, you know, you wanted to run and you said, I'm not because of the other stuff. What yeah. sparked you? What did you see with everything going on here in the city? What said, you know what? I'm going to step in there and see if I can make a difference. Um, you know, I saw I saw that it was just more of the same, uh, the pointing fingers, uh, a mayor that that um, does not lead by example, a mayor that that frankly has no leadership skills. And instead of taking ownership, you know, as mayor, the, the buck stops with you. You know, whether it was something that you spearheaded or not, you know, when it happens under your watch, it, it's your your obligated to take that responsibility for that. It, it happened under your watch. And we have absolutely none of that. It's just a lot of pointing fingers and it's somebody else's fault. And we can't have another four years of just standing still and, and playing the blame game. We, we need to have leadership. And when you started to see the, the, the really the two primary candidates, obviously um, Pete and Charlie, um, there was just a lot of people that wanted a third choice. You know, they want to change. They, they, they don't want Pete. I mean, that's the sentiment that I get anyway. But they weren't crazy about Charlie stepping into that role either. So, you know, this is this is a democratic process and it's about choices. It's about giving people the choice. And, and that's, you know, what I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm, I'm presenting that third choice. Obviously, I have experience. Uh, the work that I did representing District 5 and the city as a whole um, speaks for itself. There's... Um, a lot of a lot of faults that we all have that I have obviously but you know it's you're gonna be hard-pressed to find to find issues with with the way I ran district 5 the things that I did district uh, for district 5 so uh, hopefully that's people will be able to see that and people will be able to see what I'll bring to the entire city um, hard work making those difficult decisions when everybody else is kind of running for the hills and pushing projects forward uh, projects that are important for the city, the loop, transportation projects, quality of life projects, and at the same time being fiscally responsible. I was always very fiscally responsible with the uh, with with uh, the money and the way it was spent. And another thing that I want I want to do is is uh, I'd like to get rid of discretionary uh, spending. And the only way to really do that, I mean, it's one thing to do that as a mayor. You go in there and you have this this policy, if you will, as mayor to say, you know, we're not going to sell any more bonds for discretionary money. But the problem with that is once I leave, that policy can change with the new mayor. Sure. So the only way to actually have that done is to 
um, put a proposition on, on, on the ballot two years from now, obviously, and make a change to our charter. And once there's that change to that charter, then that charter is essentially the city of Laredo constitution. So you cannot go against that without you know putting it on the agenda or on the on the ballot and changing it again. So if you talk to people, you know people are tired of that of that um, lack of responsible spending and, and discretionary money is one of those. I mean, not all council members are, are, are fiscally responsible with it. I was certainly very responsible with that, but it does create a, an issue. Um, so, so that's one of the, the, the important um, items in my platform. Also going back to picking up trash twice a week. Um, sure. as, as you know, I was a, a, a huge uh, supporter of the recycling program and I still am. It's definitely something that we need to embrace and change our behavior and how we go about disposing our trash. But there's a lot of people that, that want their trash picked up twice a week, especially this time of the year. No, you're absolutely correct. And um, there's a lot of things that need to be changed. And we've had many discussions and we've, uh, and we've kind of talked about a bunch of issues and everybody kind of feels the same way. There's a lot of, not only because you're here sitting down, there's very few city councilmen that have really done something for their district. Everybody, yeah. some, some of them just sit down and basically forget about everything else and give a turkey in four years and probably see if they're going to get voted in again. Yeah. You know? yeah. And we, we do not need the high fibers and the ass patterns anymore. Okay? And a bunch of these people are, they get excited by listening to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's not what, what you are. I mean, we, we've talked about it. You've built stuff in your community. You made the, the community go forward. The other one is Alex Bettis. He beautified the community. Yeah. there. And uh, so we need more of that, okay? And I think everybody wants to do good, and everybody kind of loses it somewhere along the line. Yeah. And, and I, then um, I think we have to get back, get everybody back in, in, into that line of thinking. Understand what I'm saying? Well, you know, and, and ultimately the, the onus falls on the voters, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, you're, they're starting to, to really see what's what and you can attribute that a lot to social media um, sure. you, you know ultimately the voters obviously have the say so as to who's going to represent them and who's not but before it was just a lot of you know you'd run into him at heb or on the street and it's like oh he's such a nice guy and really have no idea what he's doing social media shows like this have completely changed that i mean people know what pretty much what each council member is about and what what they bring to the table and what they've sure. done and and you know i've been i was always very very probably one of my best and worst attributes was I was very vocal when I was on city council. Mm -hmm. So people got to know the type of, of city council member I was, the type of leader I was, and the type of worker I was. And, and again, I, I, those are things that I, that I think when people are going to the poll, uh, the people at District 5 certainly understand uh, the work ethic that I brought and the things that I did to District 5. And, and I think everybody else, uh, all the other districts are going to see, you know, give me some of that. We want some of that some of those projects in our community. We want, we want our district to move forward as we'll bring some of, those, some of those businesses, some of those transportation projects, some of those quality of life projects. You're, you're absolutely correct. And if folks out there, I've seen a lot of questions here. Um, if you guys have any questions, the number's up there. It's 956-949-9500. Yeah, and, please call in. And call in. And uh, if you guys want to listen to our app, the app is called Border Indy. And it's on, if you miss a show, you miss it on Facebook, you can see it as well. But um, back on track, you, we, we talked about the voter. Folks, you guys have to go out there and vote. Our voter percentage is very low. A lot of folks say that there's corruption within the elections office. There's this and that, and there's fraud going on. Well, if we don't go out and vote, we're never going to find that out. Yeah. So this November, you have to stand up, go out to the elections, and vote. Place your vote. The, 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 the That's only, the only way we can have change. The, the only way to drown out um, the, the uh, you know, quote unquote corruption or or uh, um, the cañoneros or the, the uh, you know whatever it is, whatever speculation. I'm not saying that there is or there isn't, but whatever speculation that, that there is, the only way to drown all that out is to go out and vote in numbers. Sure. You know, because they can only manufacture so many votes. So we go out there and we and we vote in numbers, then you th that just gets watered down and, and sure. doesn't doesn't have as much an effect um, on our races. So, yeah, it's absolutely important. Obviously, this year I know you're a Republican, you're a conservative. No, no not really, not really. A Republican. Well, you're, you're, I'm, not, you're, I'm more I'm more for let's get things done. You're 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 probably you know? I would say yeah, you're right. Republican is probably not the 
you know right what way I'm to put it. I would say conservative. I'm more of a libertarian but, than anybody but, else. But my know? point is, is this year it's a it's a really big Republican versus Democrat um, um, kind of war, if you were a battle. It, it, and obviously we're a huge Democrat community, so you know I'm hoping that that's going to have an impact on how many people are going to come out to vote. Let me put it to you this way: if if I was going to vote vote straight Republican, I couldn't vote for anybody here in the race. No, no, you couldn't. You just no. sit down and look at look at yourself in the mirror and bitch all day long. Yeah. And that's not what it's about. And it's no longer about being Republican or Democrat. It's about being American. And you I have agree. to vote you have to go out there and vote for the better person that's going to do the job. What are the qualifications? Period. If we're gonna go vote straight ticket, that's where the problem ends. And you see it here in Laredo. There's no such in Laredo. There's no such thing as Republican or Democrat. There's just Democrat, the good ones and the bad ones. Yeah. Okay. So or the who, Republicans you, pretending you, to be Democrats. You know, and then all of a sudden they say, "Well, you're with this group, or you're with that group, yeah. or you're with that party. So, what party are you with? Yeah. The sheriff's party, the mayor's party. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. And you know, let's get away from that. Let's vote for the person. Agreed. You know, and each person out there that's running, I see a lot of people running out there, especially in District uh, 6. District 6. I think there's 13 people now. It's a crowded field, you and, know, and that's uh, a good thing and a bad thing. Um, you got a bunch of good people running yeah. in there. You can't, not everybody's going to win. There's going to be a lot of hurt feelings. But uh, everybody's standing up and trying to say, I can do it better. Well, I can do something. Well, I can do change. I, I mean, yeah, the, the good thing is uh, obviously th there's people getting excited about running for office. They're not shying away as much as they used to. And two, with that many candidates out there working, um, obviously just one single district, but that many people working the vote, they're going to hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll transcend into a, a higher voter turnout, in District 6 anyway. Uh, district 3 has, is starting to get a little crowded as well. Uh, the rest are pretty much par for the course. The, the, my race, the mayor's race, as well. That's, that's it's, I think five. there's there's six now. Six and that's not um, so and that's usually, that's pretty much par for the course for the mayor's race, um, regardless if it's an incumbent or an open seat. So there's going to be again, there's going to be a lot of uh, of people out there working the vote, and you have again, you have this this Republican Democrat battle. So hope, I'm, I'm hoping for a, for a huge turnout. Um, it's in, whatever whatever the result is, as long as it's the the true voice of the people, um, I can certainly live with that. Sure, sure, you're absolutely correct. And uh, what we need what we need here in Laredo, we need people that care about small businesses that are going to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, family owned businesses that are going to grow. People yeah. want a betterment. And and what businesses are we going to bring to the table to give jobs to to the kids that are going from high school to college and college abroad? We're losing our kids, actually. Oh, look, you know, so ultimately, ultimately, the job of an elected official is uh, managing the budget, uh, managing the taxpayers' money, and spending it responsibly, and make sure it's you're getting you're getting it, it's as being spent as effectively and efficiently as possible, and creating and growing the economy and creating jobs. And you're absolutely right. I mean, those are the two things that that, um, um, and also obviously pub providing public safety and transportation. But, you know. Concentrating on, on the economy and growing it is, is vital to the city of Laredo. And, and a lot of times, you know, government, whether it's city or county or both, kind of get in the way of that. And you see, you see Laredo being very resilient, regardless of what's going on around the country, regardless of the missteps that our, that our local government has made. It still continues to, to grow and thrive. Imagine if you have somebody at the helm that understands what small business needs, understands what it takes to, to, to have a small business, to thrive a small business, and what, what tools they can use to, to grow that even more. Uh, um, you know, the, the overhead here in, in, in Laredo has is, is just gotten, it, it's gotten ridiculous between um, the, uh, the, the increased appraisal rates that has really hurt us, the, the water rates, uh, the, the cost of development, all those things have really undercut the growth. And still, you see Laredo continue to grow. So, you know, those are things that, that once I get in there, I'd, I'd really like to get my hands around and see what we can do about stopping our water rate increases, getting, getting control of, the, those, of, of, of the, the appraisal district and just stop that, that, that continue, the continued rise of, our, of the, the, the price of our land. How, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Now let's, let's look at city government, okay? How has the city failed, not in directing forward? Do we have too many directors in these departments that have been there longer than a lot of uh, terms of councilmen that need to go, or do we need to change? We need to 
modify that for us to kind of like root plow mm -hmm. a field, you know? It's kind of stagnant. There's no growth. We have the same people yeah. in there for a very long time. We see what apparently looks like a corruption or favoritism or what cronyism or whatever you want to call it. And um, with that going on, how can we turn that over for growth to grow? Well, you know, it's it's really hard to whoever's going to end up be, being there at city council is going to end up being there at city council. And one of the things that really caught up to me is is I got um, involved in other races and trying to to kind of pick and choose who I wanted to sit in city council with me to work with. And you know, ultimately, that's the wrong way to go about it. Who, who, whoever the voters in each district choose to be their representative, so be it. Those are the people that they've chosen, and as mayor, those are the ones that you have to work with to. To push forward the projects that they want to push forward exactly. and, of, and of course providing leadership on my part and i think that the biggest issue in city in city hall right now is there's a lot of chiefs and no indians everybody wants to be the guy but yet when you know when it starts to hit the fan and they really need a leader everybody kind of runs in their corner and doesn't want to make any decisions or you have the mayor pointing fingers oh it's that it's that person's fault it's that person's fault it's that person's fault when you know, that's what you get paid, you know, the big, the quote unquote, big bucks for, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when things get tough that you gotta, you gotta go and you gotta make those decisions. And that is what City Hall needs right now. City Hall needs somebody who's, who's, who's a leader, somebody who's going to inspire the council members and the staff in there. We do need to do, we are going to need to do some restructuring in there, but without a doubt, um, you know, they've made some changes that I completely disagree with. Uh, some of the people that, that they've put at the helm, I completely disagree with, and those are going to be changes that we're going to have to make. But ultimately, it's about it's about the plan that you put forward, the, 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 the vision that you have, and the leadership that you're going to provide. And if you can inspire those council members and that, and that, and that staff and show them that, hey, I'm here for the right reasons, and, and I'm not doing this because I'm trying to help myself, because I'm trying to help the people that, that help my campaign. I'm just trying to move the city forward. And you'll be amazed at, at how, how much that inspires staff and they understand that, you're, that you want things for the right reason. And, and you know, things begin to roll. And, and that, was, that was really what I brought to the table as, as a council member is, Studio. you know, they, they saw that, that I was in it for the right reasons and, and staff, staff really rallied behind me and, and wanted to push my projects forward because I had, I had things, I had, I had, the, the, I had the, the right, the interests of the people at heart. Okay, I guess we're getting a call here. Let me check it in. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Who morning. are you speaking with? This is La Gordiloca. ¿Qué pasó? Hey. Are you doing good? I'm doing good. I don't even know why I'm awake. At the uh, I was just yeah, about but, to ask you, know, you what are you doing is awake? It, is it cloudy outside? I'm, I'm trying to figure something out, but <laughs> first of all, I just want to tell Roca that I appreciate him running for mayor, even though I know he didn't want to. He's doing this for the people, and he has really great intentions for the people in this city. Um, the reason I was calling is because I want to know, is a water park possible in this city? Good question. I know it's been, it's been questioned a lot. Yeah, so um, when I was a council member, that was actually something that, that myself and another council member had gone to speak to the owner of Hurricane Alley over there in Corpus Christi. Sure. And Hurricane Alley is a small water park, which is, I think, exactly what we need. Nothing over the top, something that's going to not cost a, a lot of money up front and is, isn't going to have is going to cost so much money to be able to maintain and operate throughout the years, which is really what you need to worry about. You know, the $10 million investment or whatever it might be initially, that's that's an issue. But, you know, that the, the million dollar uh, cost that it's going to take to run it every year for the next 20 years, that's what you really have to take into consideration. So the that's that was really my vision um, was to put there's there's 14 acres right next to Uni Trade right now that we could use to put a water park to overlook the water park to help help Uni Trade continue to thrive. And, of course, give people that quality of life project and be able to cool down this time of year. And, and it's going to have to come out of sports venue tax. Um, I guess we, we lost her, huh? So um, it's going to have to come out of sports venue tax. Now, one of the issues is right now this current council uh, wants, to, wants to change that sports venue tax into a 4A, 4B, which isn't a horrible idea. Uh, the problem is with 4A, 4B is, is it's kind of like one huge, massive discretionary fund. You know, we're trying to get away from discretionary fund, and yet we have... This um, the sports venue tax brings in about nine million dollars a year, 
So just think of $9 million of they're a gonna slush go for fund. A they're slu- going to go for turkeys for votes? I, I mean, it could go for anything. <laughs> I, I mean, they're going to say economic development, <laughs> and, and some of it will go to economic development. Sure. But I mean, you, it's, it's just going to be really hard. And if you have the wrong person at the helm uh, managing that $9 million budget, I mean, that could just get really bad really fast. And that's my Easy. biggest concern. So what, what I like about sports venue is it's so limited in what you could use it for. It's got to be in that certain area. It's got to be for sports or some type of quality of life. And more times than not, you got to take it to voters like we did with the tennis courts. We, we, went, we went to the voters and say, hey, we want to partner up with Tammy U to build a tennis complex. And the voters approved it. So you have, you have that, 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 that you know, safety valve. Uh, in the voters and, and what you what you can and cannot do with that money that I really like and you can still use it to be able to to uh, create some jobs. I mean, I'm not saying a water park is going to be this huge job producer, but there's going to be some jobs that come with it. But you know, there's that, that quality of life that the people here in Laredo have been have been dying for. And I mean, right now in this heat, um, could you imagine having a water park where people can go out there and have a good time? And in, instead of going to San Antonio or Houston or wherever it is that they're going right now, they're staying here in Laredo and, and taking advantage of that. So, yeah, to answer Priscilla's question, it's something that I would that I'm that I'm definitely gonna gonna um, explore and fight for. I know there's another council member on on council right now that that wants to do the same thing. And as long as it's, we can find somebody that we could actually partner up with, the issue with the last one was they wanted the land, they wanted us to build it, and they wanted to keep all the money. I'm like, whoa, yeah, I mean, that, that, that that's not gonna work. No, you, you need, we need good negotiators out there as well, you know? That's number one. But let's change that, because you said you have one other, one other council member that's in there. You've worked with some of these councils mm-hmm. that's in there right now. They're going to be there at least for the next three, four years, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of folks come out there, the gang of five and the gang of two and the gang of eight and the gang of this and the gang of that. Yeah. So many. There's more gangs there than, than remember the Warriors? And <laughs> But you know, remember the guys with the clown with the bat? Yeah, all of a sudden, and, so, show yeah, up, yeah. and then all of a sudden, every time you turn around, there's a different number of gangs. So, how can you deal with it? How is Roque going to be able to befriend everybody? Well, you know, right now they're calling it the Gang of Six, I think is what it is. Um, I'd like it to be the Gang of Nine. Yeah, I mean, it's important that we all work together and we find some type of common ground. Obviously, that's not going to be for every single item. There's going to be some sure. disagreement from item to item. But the important sure. thing is that we all get on the same page and we all understand, look, we're all here for the right reasons. We all want to push the, the city forward. We all want the, the most for our district. And it's my job to build, to build that coalition and, and bring everybody together and, and try to, to push in that direction. There's going to be some disagreements along the way. There always is. Um, but to, to just have, you know, these little factions, you know, not just not little factions, really two factions, one big one and one, one that just doesn't have the votes to move their agenda forward, uh, needs to change. And, you know, that was one of the things, again, when I was in council is I was always on that group that had the votes because, I, you know, I did what I had to do to, to reach across and find the votes that I needed to be able to move my projects forward. Now, one of the reasons why you see this huge or this very sharp divide at City Council is that's create, that was created by, by, by the mayor. I mean, the mayor went in there and without even knowing, I always like to make this joke, is, you know, he went in there, he didn't even know the combination to get into City Hall yet. And he, he, and he already knew it all. He knew all the problems. He knew what was wrong um, and was, never took the time to actually understand how city government works, to understand how the budget worked, to get to know the people within there, just immediately started, started you know, uh, pointing fingers at people. And that created this huge divide within city council. And now you know, he's gotten to, this, to the point where, he's, where he points fingers at, at people. And, and you know, when my first two years when I was, or my last two years, his first two years, um, he uh, immediately uh, made me an enemy. You know, even though I was the one that, that brought him in, I went to his office uh, the night that he won. I went to his, to his campaign headquarters, congratulated him, told him I was looking forward to, to working with him. Um, set up his first meeting at City Hall with the city manager, brought him in for that, was turned into a mess. All he did was start yelling. Uh, went to his office to, to meet with him as well and then took him to the city charter and, and, and you know, all the things that one needs to start to get acclimated with, with being in city government. And really, just never took the time to be able to read that. I mean, to this to this day, still doesn't really understand how to be able to run a meeting. Doesn't understand Robert's rules of order. So 
you know, th th those are things that, that that's an atmosphere that he created. Um, so, you know, those those other groups or quote unquote watchdog groups can start go there and say, you know, say gang of five, gang of six, gang of whatever. You know, that, that's a creation by their guy. Whether he melt, whether he meant to do it or not, that's that's what he has done as as because he is such an inept leader. He has created this really strong faction against him uh, because he's just difficult to get along with. I mean, it's just really that simple. You know, and uh, that's a, a great point because we lived it. We were there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's in, and you're an amicable person. And there's some people in there that have gotten that distrust, this hate, or whatever you want to call it, because of those watch watchdog groups that are out there running around. And uh, it's going to be hard working with several of those people that are out there. But let's change the subject a little bit and come back to, we have a Mr. Olivares Ricardo. Ricardo, you have a good question. I'm going to read it right here. I'm going to read the last part. And it says, uh, let this be a private investment. Stop scaring businesses away from, the, from Laredo like before. In other words, why are we giving them money if they can invest it on their own? Yeah, I, I agree. And, that, and again, that was, that was why... There was a, a, an issue the first time. I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the water park, right? right. Yeah. The, the first time, um, we had somebody that, that we wanted to go into. Look, the city doesn't want to be in the water park business. I yeah. mean, we have enough issues at all. We do have this land that we'd like to develop, and we, we'd like to have this, this quality of life project to complement Unitrade. So I was looking for somebody that wanted to go in and invest some money. Uh, maybe we give them, we extend some water lines. We, we give some type of tax break. Um, something that makes made sense for both of us. The reason it didn't happen with this other group is they wanted us to give them the land, they wanted us to put all the money to build the water park, and then they didn't even want us want us to have any 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 part of the gate. They wanted to keep it all. So that's sure, why that didn't that that didn't work. Now my yeah. job will be to find somebody that we can that we can partner with that is willing to invest their own money um, to be able to bring that quality of life project. So. I'm not by, by no means am I trying to scare any businesses away. If you if you really look at this, um, this makes no sense for me. This is a quality of life entertainment facility that's going to be in direct competition with my business. I mean that's what I do. You know, people especially during the summer, people are trying to get out of the sun into the air condition. They're coming and now. I'm going to have two facilities, so um, I'm not trying to scare any business away. I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm probably. Uh, um, I, I'm uh, again. This this doesn't make any sense for me to do. So to make to 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 trying to insinuate like I'm scaring business away. I'm the only business I'm scaring away is my own business. No, you're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. You know, it's and a lot of investors, a lot of people out there that have these parks have have these entertainment centers. You mm -hmm. know, like arena. They learned with the white elephant that was thrown at us in the early 2000 with the arena that was built, mm -hmm. and that white elephant is still there. And now they're changing it. Now, now I think uh, Mr. Timothy Sharkey said at one point, you know, the city's wanting to construct an entertainment center at, or similar to the LEA. The Civic Center. The Civic Center. Yeah. So, I mean, we do need that because we don't have one. Yeah. We do need that. Where are we going to place it? Now. That's the question. And, and, you know, just to go back with the LEA, the, the biggest problem with the LEA is it was just built too big. It's an 8,000 seat arena when really we needed something like a 5,000 seat arena. That's really become the biggest issue for us. And I could see why, they, why the city council at that time went, went big because they saw the growth in the city of Laredo. But you, know, you look at the one in the valley, the valley's a 5,000 seat arena. And the valley obviously has about four times the people that we have to be able to seat it. And you go in there and, and the atmosphere in there is just amazing. Um, you can have 3,000 people in there and it just it feels like it's packed sure you go you put 3,000 people in our in our arena and just like man nobody's here so that's one of the issues and then on top of that obviously it cost us more to build an arena with five with 3,000 more more uh, more seats and it costs that much more money to be able to maintain so that's again you go back to just it, uh, building it correctly and not having your eyes bigger than your stomach is probably um was the biggest issue when it comes to the arena yeah, and I'm gonna and, and Timothy you're still you you he changed his question what about the building downtown well, let me tell you something about downtown. Downtown, you need to place hotels downtown. You need to place parking downtown. You need to place people that actually live downtown. Okay, how yeah. many of us here actually go downtown? Yeah, very few, unless you work in the city or whatnot during from nine to five. You mm -hmm. can put it that way. So any business that is open downtown is probably going to flop 
if there's nothing to do at night, if there's not people that are going to walk to the businesses, if people are not going to continue with those businesses, right? I, I agree. I'm, I'm, and so we, number one, the city and the investors of the city actually have to start building some of those those buildings and turning them into some kind of apartments downtown, mm -hmm. kind of giving people a different point to head downtown. Uh, opening up a civic center downtown, I think we're shooting ourselves in the foot. I think we should open it up somewhere else. But Yeah, and, and the, the, the beauty about that is um, there's going to be a proposition on, on the ballot this year where the people are going to be able to vote. Um, they vote for, for they're either going to say yes or no to the increase of the rental car fee and the increase of the hotel motel tax. And if that goes through, then um, from all accounts, it's it, it's going to be built downtown. If it does not, then you know that's that uh, that project is is dead in the water essentially. So the people are going to have the ability to be able to vote and say yay or nay to that. We, you know, if for any, I think that for any bit, exactly right, for anything else that comes out like a civic like a civic center or like what happened to the jail or so on and so forth, we the people need to go mm -hmm. out there and actually yeah, vote. Yeah, you need to go on vote. And uh, we need to do that. And uh, again, when that comes out, people need to go out to the, the poll sites and literally vote. You yeah. have to get off your seat and go out there and vote. Yeah. And if you don't do that, we're going to end up with a civic center downtown. Yeah, that, that's, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know? you know? yeah. uh, um, and, and the beauty about that, I'll, I'll say, is, is that, those, that those increases in the taxes, for the most part, are going to be an increase on our transient uh, population. I mean, how many times do we go out, do you rent a hotel in town? Obviously, almost never. Um, the rental car, same thing. You know, it does, it's gonna be more people that are visiting, that are visiting our, our, our community. But even then, I mean, you, you want to make this community, <coughs> excuse me, as business friendly and as, and as cost effective as possible, re regardless of what it is. Um, you know, you talk about driving business away. I mean, you think about how many people or how many companies rent hotels here because of of the oil field business um you know how it's going to affect then, their bottom line yeah, that, that's sure. going to be a huge effect to their bottom line unless you know there is a way to be able to get around that if they stay for 30 days and they can write a letter and, and that gets away but you know that's besides the point so i mean you you need to be cognizant of how exactly it's going to affect our economy and, and do we really need line. it or do we need to if or basically build build upon this white elephant that's now, I don't even know what it's called now, that entertainment arena. It's the Sames Arena? Sames Arena? Yeah, I yeah, think it's Sames Arena. Yeah. I mean, they change it every six months. <laughs> yeah, it gets, I mean, they sell the rights and then you know, they're Maybe we should sell it to Trump, but yeah. the Trump Arena. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, I have a funny story on that, is, is when, when the mayor was first running, um, he was coming up with these really crazy ideas and, and he said he wanted to sell the arena. And I thought, so who, who the hell's gonna buy the arena? I said, it's not like, it's not like Trump is gonna gonna land here anytime soon and buy the and then, arena. And then he turned around and, two weeks later. He was and, da and damn if Trump didn't then, then land at the airport two years later. <laughs> well, you know he's the only one that's visited Laredo. So yeah, yes, yeah. All the rest, yeah, all the rest of them kind of give a little. You know, I, I, I wave the birdie. Tr Trump has done some good things. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. Gonna, he's done some good things for our economy. He's done some really. He's done good. He, he's he, he, yes, he has. I'm, I'm, there's been he there's knows. been a, there's been some good and there's Say been some it. bad with him. <laughs> um, but, oh man, sometimes I just you know somebody needs to take his phone away from him. Oh, it's fine. Man. Let him do what he has to. Man. <laughs> The guy's a multi Of course, some, he can uh, do whatever he wants. Of course, not. there's you know, of course there's probably people out there saying the same thing about me. So you know, so number one, let's just let's move forward. I think we need to take care of our our backyard, which is Laredo. I agree. I, I mean, and, that, that's uh, plain that. and simple and bring businesses here support the local businesses that are here and you know i keep saying this when i grew up we had to uh, keep the buck in laredo yeah okay yeah. and people have lost it you know people go buy their cars in divine and san antonio and let's let's start bringing let's keep the buck here in laredo but we all have to also as businesses we also have to be compatible with the cost of living that is here Okay, the, the folks that are here. And sometimes we have to take a cut to gain that client. Yeah. You know, and that's what we need. Yes, sir. I, I agree. I mean, look, business is cutthroat, and you have to do what you need to do to, to compete. Uh, nowadays, it's not just with the person next door, but it's the person down I-35. That's exactly right. You know, right. Our, world has, our, our world has just shrunk. It's not, it's not this huge, uh, overwhelming world anymore. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, just, it's just a smaller community now so 
So yeah, I mean, it, it's it's important that, that we make uh, a cognizant decision to keep our money here as much as possible. I mean, Laredo is a great community. Um, it continues to grow. It has its faults, obviously, but but you know those are things that that we need to work through. And and I think the biggest one is quality of life. I mean, if there's one gripe that people have here, it is, is, it's just our quality of life and what there is to do. Obviously, Playmore is going to help change that. It's a huge facility that we're building to be able to provide more entertainment with for our community, not just for our children, but for the adults as well. But we need more of it. You know, we talk about quality of life. I have some dear friends of mine that are here from France, which are actually gonna be moving to the United States mm -hmm. for that quality of life. Why the United States? Because of that freedom. Greatest country in the yeah, world. Biggest dream that we can have. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we've always, we've never been against immigrants. On the contrary. But doing it right, doing it legally is what we need to do. And everybody's welcome here. I mean, Laredo's a gateway yeah. from, from Mexico. We welcome everybody with open hands and open arms. We embrace yeah. them. But if they do it correctly. Yeah. Understand? So I think we need to continue showing that amicable side of America. Okay? and embrace everybody who wishes to come in here for the benefit of the group. I agree, and one of the, you know, this immigration issue has really been, uh, you know, us against them, if you will, when the reality is, I don't care how liberal you are, um, nobody is in favor of illegal immigration. Sure. Um, it, I think the biggest, and, and this has gotten lost in the weeds when you, when you start to have this conversation with people, because I've had this conversation with people before, and they're like, wait a minute, but, but you're not saying you're for illegal immigration. I'm like, of course not. Nobody's for illegal immigration. It's just the, the, our idea of how you curtail it is vastly different. Um, obviously, most of the people here in Laredo, I, I think if you did a poll, are against a wall. We don't want a wall, nor do we think we need a wall now. If you're talking about a virtual wall, if you're talking about more boots on the ground, that, that's going to help secure the border, that uh, at the same time is going to be an economic boom for us. Obviously, the more Border Patrol agents we have, the more good-paying jobs we have here in Laredo, 100% uh, in favor of that. So th that's what really gets lost when you have that, start to have that conversation about, uh, about illegal immigration and, and also about you know, how they get treated. I think that's what's really with the people that, that, are, that are strongly against uh, illegal immigration, which we, we all are, but the ones that are a little bit more honorary about it, I should say, are, they're just upset about how those illegal immigrants are getting treated once they get here. Sure. Um, you know, whether they get released and say, we'll see you in, you know, hopefully we'll see you in, in a couple of months at, at an immigration court hearing. Um, you know, I'm for treating them as human beings. Now, the ones that are criminals, there's, they, they need to be treated as criminals. Of course. Um, but there's, there's just a certain way, there's gotta be some type of middle ground that we can meet in where, where we're, we're treating them like human beings, but we're still, th we're still watching out for the American people. I think, uh, you know, people have, have placed this discriminatory word, mm -hmm. this discrimination, everything's racism, which is not different. And there's a, two words that I'm gonna put out. One is patriotism, I'm a patriot. You're a patriot. We love our country. Mm -hmm. We're not. Na we don't have nationalism with us. Like you know, okay, we're Americans. We hate Canadians. We hate Mexicans. We have that's being nationalist. We're not that. Nationalism is a total different entity, and I think that's the racist or to associate it with what their people are trying to yeah. assume, right? Yeah. And we don't have prejudice against anybody else. We're just trying to make sure that whoever comes in here does it legally. Like if we go to Mexico, we do the same thing. You know, we go to Mexico illegally, you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. <clears throat> I mean, and again, I, I think if you have, if you sit down and everybody's just calm um, and real with themselves, everybody will agree on that. But I think also everybody will agree that, you know, we're obviously, our, our sister community, our sister city is Nuevo Laredo. And, and, you know, I've said this before, Laredo is going to be as strong as Nuevo Laredo, and Nuevo Laredo is going to be as strong as Laredo. Laredo knows, knows Laredo, and Nuevo Laredo, and, and vice versa as well. Sure. So it, it's important that we have this strong community or the strong relationship with with Nuevo Laredo and with Mexico as a whole. And and you know it's difficult to to have that conversation at times when you just when you have this this type of tone that is being taken with with Mexico or or 
or Canada or or whatever or or what, whatever country um, the president chooses to tweet out about at whatever given given time of the middle of the night, and, and that's what that's what concerns me more about anything else. It's not so much his actions, although his actions sometimes are issues as well, but it's just that tone that you you can't do that. You can't have those fighting. You can't have that that. That uh, bar, the, the, I, the other night I called it bar banter. You, you, can't, you can't have that type of approach, you know, no. to, to when you're I dealing see, with I international see, relationships. I see the point towards everything else, you know. I see, I see the rationale behind everything that's going on. And right now we need to take a grip of ourselves and continue honoring the red, white, and blue and what it stands for. And, 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 and I don't think to, anybody's going to disagree with that. I think we all have to stop putting dividends in there and putting hyphens before America, you know, like Mexican hyphen American, Italian hyphen America. We're all American, period. And once we take that hyphen away, then we can all understand who we really are. Yeah. We have a beautiful melting pot here. I mean, I, yeah, I see your point. I mean, I, 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 the, the, an American isn't a certain type of, of, of race. I mean, Americanism, we're a melting pot. You know what I'm saying? So, but so, I, I, th yeah. I think that's more just people trying to, 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 identify themselves and you know I, I mean because you know when i was i went to school at hard simmons you know the baptist school a lot of a lot of anglos and you know they would they would call me mexican and they weren't being disrespectful they were just you know they were saying you know i'm, I'm hispanic i said no i'm mexican american you know i'm not i'm not mexican you know yeah, so i'm, I'm american but it was just it was just me trying to to, to make that that that, I, that difference I, I and you know they'd say hey speak when i, I like to speak a lot of spanish when i was on the football field and they'd say, "Hey, speak Mexican." I was like, well, "It's not Mexican, man. It's Spanish, you know." So, and, and it's it's just people trying to 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 make the difference between you know what's what's what. So, yeah. I don't necessarily, but I but I see your point. I mean, we're 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 American, and what an American is 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 just yeah, it's no, I mean, somebody who who came more more than likely came from somewhere else, and and now besides like our our, our good friends back here, they're going to be American here. Exactly, soon. exactly right. From France, be, via France, but they're going to be American here pretty soon. Right, and that's exactly right, and they're doing it correctly. And, so, uh, so they just won their last World Cup because the USA is not going to win a World Cup anytime soon. No, not anytime soon. <laughs> not within the next century. <laughs> Maybe the women. Yeah, the, the women will. The women, yeah. the women will. The women are good soccer players. You know, the men are still trying to yeah. play foosball or something, whatever it's called, the little thing that they used to kick mm. We got another call. Anyway, um, what will be your first thing, say you get elected, your first thing that you go inside, well, what is Roque going to do? I'm going to go in there and do what? Unfortunately, the budget is already set um, once a mayor takes office. As you know, the budget co goes into effect in October. Um, so there's not much you can do with the budget. There is going to be some, some moves that we're going to make. Um, uh, within within the staff within the administration that I think we'll we'll, we'll do pretty pretty immediately. Uh, obviously, all this hinges on on what the will of the council is as a whole. That there's there going to be some new council members go in there and trying to figure out figure out their mindset and the direction that they want to go in. If they're anything like me, um, I went in there and I really took the first six months just just to learn, just to get to know everybody, to get to learn. Uh, city government, obviously coming from the private sector, uh, I understood how to handle money. The revenue streams coming going into the private sector are a little bit different. How you leverage those revenue streams are very different. So I, I really took the time to just be able to learn before I really started to make any push for any major projects or make any or make any changes. So um, to answer your question, there is definitely some changes that I'm going to want to make in the third floor. Um, not immediately, uh, but within the first six months. One of the one of the gripes that I have with with the mayor as well is, you know, it's been four years and he's got three city managers that he's been through and hasn't gone along with any, with any of them. Doesn't get along with this current city manager either. You know, and, and it's cost us over a million dollars because of the way it was it was handled. Like instead of waiting for the evaluation period uh, um, to to. Um, fire or dismiss that city council or that that city manager we, you know we did it five months before that that evaluation period that cost us another half a million dollars that we had to pay him even though he wasn't working 
And then on top of that, we were now we were behind the eight ball to find a new city manager, so we couldn't really go through the process of finding the city manager. So there was just a certain way to be able to handle all that transition, if you will, to make sure you have the right one. And one of the reasons why we've had, he's had three city managers is he's never been able to manage that transition. He's never been able to just say, hey, you know what? Um, uh, I'm, and you know, with, with Carlos, what I have said, it, it, with the writing was on the wall, Carlos was gonna be gone. Uh, and Carlos was a friend of mine, That's everybody knows this, but it was obvious once Pete won that Carlos, Carlos was, was, you know, his, he, he, was was, he was gonna be out. And this was in November. Evaluation is in April. So, oh. so we're six months away from his evaluation. So instead of saying, hey, you know, Carlos, um, uh, thank you for your service, but you know, come April, you're gonna be out. Help us bridge that gap. So instead of getting rid of him right then and there, which you still have to pay him up until April, I mean, by contract, on top of all the other benefits that he gets, you still have to pay him, but he's not working. And we don't have a city manager. So now we're, we're in a hurry to find another city manager. Instead of just saying, hey, Carlos, you know what, you're out, but let's, let's continue working together. Let's help us through this interview, through this interview process. Um, continue to run the city, and now we have six months to really go through a process that we're all comfortable with to find a city manager that we're comfortable with. Um, instead of just getting rid of him, and it's like now it's like, oh wow, we, we, we need a city manager, and we just kind of we, we went to the first person that that was there, and, and frankly, the interview process was a joke when I was there. Um, so that's been that's been an issue. So how I'm gonna, how I will handle that transition will be vastly different to make sure that we have a city manager that is qualified make sure a city manager that all the people are, are comfortable with and make sure it's going to be a city manager that's going to that's gonna have a, a tenure longer than a year and a half or two years that we won't have to pay off again because that's what's going to happen. Every time you get rid of a city manager, it's at least a half a million dollars cash money that you got to give. And that's, that, that's, uh, that's being fiscally responsible. And, and that is to get rid of a city manager is whose decision? The mayor's? The city council. You need five votes. You need five votes to get rid of to get rid of a, a city manager. So that's that, why. I, so at that time it was a gang of five. Yeah, at that time it was. It, it, you know, it, it's it was funny because they didn't actually have five. There was there was so they didn't understand how the charter worked. Um, the mayor can vote in a tie, in the case of a tie. So it's got to be four four. If you remember. The District 7 seat was vacant right. at that time. Um, council Member Vera had just been recalled and there was not a new council member. So they had three votes. No, they, no I'm sorry, they, no, they actually had four votes, but there, wasn't, there was three votes on the other side. There would have been four if Vera was there, but there was not. So it was a four, three, they had five with the mayor, but the mayor couldn't vote because it wasn't a tie. So the mayor went in there guns blazing, I got five votes, and then we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. No, you, there's not five votes, you have four votes because you can't, you can't vote. You know, so they started panicking, but it, it, had, it had gotten to be so unprofessional behind the scenes that you know, Carlos just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Um, and then we, you know, all the chips started to fall. Yeah, well, you know, this, this city manager's doing a good job, I guess, you know, of what it expected. Uh, I, I, I think we can, we can handle the budget much better. Um, I, obviously there's been, you've seen these, these, uh, travel expenses that have skyrocketed. Uh, our bridge, our bridge fees went up. They just added this, this water fee to our water bill. Um, and then described and let us know exactly where it was going. I would have, if they were going to do that, I would have liked to have seen it go towards public work so we can maintain our streets. So I, I think, I, I, honestly, I disagree. I disagree with you. I, I don't think he's been fiscally responsible at all. Um, he travels a lot. He's, he's hardly ever at City Hall. From what I understand, he's there maybe six days out of the month. Um, I'd like to have a job where I'm there six days out of the month and get paid you know, $200,000 and then have the, the golden parachute that he's gonna have. So uh, I, I, I disagree with, with your, your their assertion to say that he's done a good job. I think it could be much, much better um, much better uh, um, ran and, and, he's and gone fiscally under some, responsible. Excuse me for interrupting. And he's gone under some fireworks in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he has. 
and 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 it all goes back to you know manning the ship you know when you're not there um running the data look you're the city manager right you were hired to run the city that's your job you can't do that from your cell phone in a hotel in austin or in washington dc or in san francisco or wherever it is that he just he decides to be on um any given day to 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 be there you know six seven even if it's ten days uh, out of the month and expect to run a city this size efficiently effectively um you, it, it's just it's ridiculous it's ridiculous but 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 that's that's the the style that that you have now is you know when i was in council i was in i was at city hall at least at, at least three times out of the week if not four sure um and this is a as a council member and you know and and the staff it needs to be there to be able to man the ship and run the city. And when you're when the city manager, when the head guy isn't there, uh, you're going to have this trickle down effect and in, in effective leadership. No, you're you're correct. I see I see I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. So a lot of changes need to do, and the only way change is coming is through vote. And if people do not go out and vote, it's going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, and, and you're and, right, you're, you're exactly and, and, right. If, and people are shouting out for help. People now, the people are pointing fingers, okay, and uh, it's going the other way. And, and you see that throughout the whole city, from all the different areas, and different people from different walks of life as well. And they're all claiming, they're all stating, saying the same thing. You know, here we have Mimi right here. How are we doing, Mimi? Same thing. We need somebody that knows. Um, about uh, how to manage money. Yeah, that, that's and that. both the mayor and the city manager need to do that. You know, and um, if I put it to you this way, if you've never cut payroll, you do not know how to manage money. You know, when when you have when you have other people's uh, nice. livelihoods in your hands, you're, you're, that, that responsibility, uh, yeah, it it completely changes how you attack uh, your budget. And you know, this year. This year, I had a, I gotta be honest, I had a difficult time paying my taxes. I mean, it, it, was, it was tough, and for the first time in, in, a, in a long time, I had that, that dose of reality, like, man, you know, th it's tough out here. You know, and, and w there's a lot of silver linings that came from me losing my reelection, and, and that was one of them. I got back to, to reality and how hard it is to, to make a living as a, as a small business. And, and you know, you're, he's absolutely right that when you need to be able to understand you need to have the compassion to understand that those people those people's livelihood are in your hands but also the responsibility and and the fortitude frankly to make those difficult decisions and say you know what we can't give you any more this year and we can't we we have to get away from continuing to put the onus on the people of laredo to pay our bills it seems like every year we're putting more and more on the backs of the people of laredo and we get away from treating them like like customers because the, ultimately the city is is a business and and we don't treat the people of Laredo like customers anymore like we treat them like like oh they need us that we have to get a, we have to get away from we that. have to get away from that I mean we have yeah. to we have to treat them like customers and like customers that we're fighting for just yeah. like any other business and folks you know I've said this in other shows and I brought it out and, and I'm gonna say it here and, and Roken knows me very well he knows exactly where I'm coming from this November, you have to vote for the alpha, not the betas. We have enough betas all over the place. And uh, we're, we're, we have that shirt coming out, and that shirt, we're going to be selling it here. November, vote for alphas, no betas. And we're going to do that to scholarship for kids that need to do martial arts and so on and so forth. Get, start helping some of these kids out there. So, you know, that was an idea that came out here. I think we had uh, Frank Castillo with us, and I said that. And uh, we have the designer met coming out. And, Folks, we really need to pay attention to who we're voting for, not why we need to vote for this person. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna explain that. Realize who the person is, study that person, see what that person has done. Not the why, not because my cousin needs a job, so we have to vote for so and so that never even says hi to you until four years come by. Don't vote for the person that's gonna give you a turkey or Easter eggs or whatnot, you know? for you to vote for them because they're going to be out there doing that same thing or apple pies or candies or whatnot. No. Do not sell yourself for a free taco or a dance. 
That's not the way Laredo works anymore. People are waking up. Study, research, because that's the only way we're going to change. You know, yeah, I, I mean, we, we need to stop falling for the lies, for the campaign rhetoric, for the promises. You know, it's one thing to say you're transparent. It's another thing to actually be transparent. It's one thing to say that you're for the people and, and to actually be for the people. Uh, do your, like you said, do your research. Who has been effective uh, as, as an elected official? And you know, I have four years of, on my resume of, of what I brought to the table and the things that I did. Um, Pete has four years, Charlie has eight years. I, I just sit back and compare, and compare the differences of, of the accomplishments that each of us have had. And, and, and honestly, I mean, it, it's, it's not gonna be much, much of a comparison. And when you look at, at the understanding of, of our budget, and being able to work with, with other people, uh, I think I, I'm, I stand head and shoulders above, above each of them. So I, I, hope, I hope that people, that, that people take, take notice of, of just how important this is to me, just how important the city of Laredo would, is to me and, and how much I've taken the time to understand city government and to be able to make the, 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 the right decisions on behalf of the people and the work ethic that I'm gonna bring. I mean. Again, I'm not, I'm not perfect by any means. Um, I'm far from it, I'm far, very far from perfect, but I do mean well, and I do understand what needs, what needs to change to, to right this ship and get control of our budget and, and get control of, of the, the, the fiscally irresponsible spending that has been going on the past two years. And just, just as importantly, get control of those city council meetings. Those city council meetings have become an embarrassment. Um, I mean, you got guys coming in there and the walking behind the last one, the last one I when I had one one guy from just watch the group go behind almost behind council it's, telling it, people it, what to do look it, and you're it, like it, it's embarrassing and, and you know it's become nothing but it, it's not the city council meeting is a business meeting it, it's it's a it's a board meeting of the city of Laredo and when you start seeing nothing but politics I mean it's turned into nothing but politics the the public comments portion. We all, it, it's an important part of the agenda. We want people to be able to go there and voice their opinion. But it's not public comments anymore, it's political comments. That needs to stop. And that starts with the person at the head of the table, the person with the gavel, allowing people to go there and berate your, your colleagues, because that's what, what, the other, what the councilmen are, they're his colleagues. And when you allow somebody there and just directly attack a council member, whether you like that council member or not, whether that council member is you know, somebody that you get along with, it doesn't matter. You can't allow that and then expect the council to respect you, respect the council to support you. You, you, just, you just can't. It's unprofessional. No, you're absolutely correct. And uh, when you have that gavel, that, ha that gavel represents a huge thing. Yes, it does. And it, it represents wisdom and how to, be, how to walk among, among sages. And a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. can't, can't do that walk. And I've seen great men that come from that have great backings cannot, and I've seen the person that has no education be the one out there that knows how to use that. Yeah, better. oh yeah. So the gavel makes a person. So once you have a gavel in your hand, you have to realize that that power that you have, how are you gonna use it? And are you gonna use it for the right or are you gonna use it for the wrong? And many people go out there and basically don't use it. They lose that power and the power gets thrown out. When you're, at, when you're at the head of the table like that, you have this huge responsibility and you can't, you can't allow yourself to be swayed on what people think about you. You just have to have the backbone to do what you think is right. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna be right 100% of the time. I mean, that's, that's impossible. It doesn't mean that you're gonna satisfy 100% of the people, that, that's impossible. But you have to have the backbone to just do what you think is right. Now, what, one of the things that, that I got away from, unfortunately, my first time was, you know, I started to not listen to the people as much as I should have. Um, I, I thought I had all the answers. It, and this time around, I'm gonna have a much different approach and listen to the people and listen to what it is that, that they want, i.e. the trash. You know, the trash, picking up trash twice a week was something that I was strongly against the first time. But, Again, people want it, and there's got to be a way for us to figure out how we can give them 
uh, trash pickup twice a week while still promoting and embracing our recycling program. And, and again, it comes down to we have to stop finding a way to say no and find a way to say yes if it's something that the people want. Uh, you, you said something very, very, that puts a person, separates a lad from a man, okay? And that was, I looked at myself and I earned a mistake. And the yeah. mistake was that I was not listening to the people and I thought I could do everything by myself. And you said, I've learned from that mistake. And once you start learning from those mistakes, then you start growing, becoming more, how can I say, more, more of a man. And to me, that's, that's right there. Well, thank you. You know, and, and, and that's, once we make mistakes and say, you know what, I screwed up, and I'm going to change it, and I'm going to move forward. I learned from my mistakes, now let's move forward. Look, there, there's, there's a handful of reasons as to why I lost my re-election. Uh, and I say this often, it wasn't because of the job I did. I, I think I did, I did one hell of a job as, as a city council member. It was, it, it, it was just, you know, things that you, you take, you take, you know, they, they dug into my past and all that ugliness. That was part of it. Uh, me not listening to the people because I thought I knew it all. That was part of it. There was just a lot of things that just, my, the, the tours that I didn't give $100 million to a certain developer and they came after me. That was part of it. There was just a lot of things that, that I just, I, I couldn't survive. But, you know, there was, again, there's a silver lining to that. Um, I learned from, from my mistakes and, and how to be able to, to handle myself and listen to the people and, and you know those are that's part of life. It's that's part of being an elected official, uh, and, and it's going to be something that I'm going to take into into hopefully my tenure as as mayor. Being able to work with all the city council members, you know, that's something that I didn't do. I was always just picking and choosing, and just okay, I have five votes. That's all that matters to me. You know, as mayor, you can't do that. You you need to you need to build that coalition, and that coalition can't be just the majority of council. It needs to be the entire council. Sure. And you got people out there that you're never going to agree with, but it's sometimes it's best to agree to disagree. Yeah, it's got to be civil disagreement. And um, and I've, you know, we need change. Anything else? Last words? No, just uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm I'm excited about about this campaign. I'm excited about taking you know my my case and my voice to the entire city of Laredo and and representing the the best interests of the entire city of Laredo. Uh, this is going to be we have a long road ahead of us. We're we're a little bit behind the eight ball. We're obviously a little late, but you can see there's a lot of excitement from from the people. Uh, my phone is continually go, con, always going off. Facebook is going to be a really part of our big part of our campaign. We don't have the budget that that some of the other guys have, so uh, it's going to be a lot of grassroots. If there's somebody that wants to get involved with the campaign, please reach out to me via Facebook on either my personal page or my Roque Vela for for mayor page, and uh, and we'll put you to work. You know, we 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 want what's best for Laredo, and 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 uh, um, we got to go out and earn it, folks. And again, the only way you want change is for you guys to go out there and vote for it. If you do not go vote, there's not going to be no change. It's, it's that simple. It's just that, it's that simple. So, yeah, please go out and make time to vote, whether you vote for me or against me. Um, just make time to go vote. It's important that we have the, the, the voice of the people. Okay. Until next time, I'm going to have a different kind of show on Thursday. Uh, and it will be a surprise. And uh, you guys stay safe. Have a good day. And remember, don't text and don't text and drive. Plenty of accidents out there. And peace. Until next time. Have a good day. Thank you.